Hey, thank you again for watching this video series on replacement of my water heater. Uh, I just want to remind you, these videos were created over a year ago, and these were some of the first videos I ever did. So if you're just seeing this, uh, my apologies for some of the poor camera work. I'm still not very good at this. I'm just a DIY guy, but I wanted to put that out there. It's also been a year since I made all these changes. So if you're seeing things or hearing things that you go, wait a minute, that shouldn't have happened during covid don't worry, it didn't. All of this repair happened a year ago. So it's my apologies that it's taken this long, but I finally got down to editing it and getting it to you guys. Okay? God bless. Enjoy the video. I hope there's some useful information in here for you. God bless you. I've got the new water heater roughly in place. You can kind of see what it's all going to look like there. Obviously, nothing's hooked up yet, but I have run into another problem. And this is something that kind of frustrates me, I'll be honest. Uh, the guys at Richmond in the manual for this water heater said all external connections are three quarter inch. And that proved true for the side connection there and the side connection there and the drain fitting there. Problem is this guy right here. I thought that was a three quarter inch fitting, but I thought, man, that thing is beefy. Well, I bought a brand new piece of that uh, shark bite connection. And if I place this on here, you can see very easily that is not a three quarter inch fitting. So unfortunately it looks like I'm going back to the hardware store. So I'll be back with you in a little bit. I got to go to the hardware store and figure out exactly what parts I need to hook up this water heater. I'll be back to the research board. Um, I will get that gas line connected. If it doesn't reach, I've actually purchased a flex line to replace because of the placement, but it looks like it's gonna line up. So hopefully that's not a problem as well, but we'll get there when we get there, I guess. I'm headed to the hardware store. I'll let you know what I find. All right, after searching and finding and talking to the people at the hardware store, finally we got success. So Richmond water heaters which is also ream apparently this 75 gallon model even though the manual says three quarter inch fitting is on all exterior outlets the interior dimension is three quarter these ones here that's a three quarter that's a three quarter no problem this guy on top however much larger this is a one inch fitting as i came to find out so i had to go by one inch down to three quarter for my copper line up here now that means I had to go to this monster. This is all any of our local hardware stores carry. It's got a one inch fitting with a nice uh, rubber gasket on the bottom. So no pipe tape on that one. And then a push to connect three quarter to go up in the top on the copper. As you can see, it's a 24 inch line. It's actually for feeding you water softener is where it came out of at the hardware store. So we're gonna connect that. Uh, I can't really get a good camera angle to show you while I connect it, but I'm going to connect hot and cold up into the two pipes. I had to string a bucket up there just for my little residual drip so that I didn't have that while I was gone down in town. But uh, we're going to get that connected. There's enough water line there. There's going to be uh, a loop, a loop-de-loop -loop on each of those lines. So I don't really know any other way to do it without having to replumb gas and move the water heater a long ways away. Uh, the thought came up of cutting the water line, and on the hot, that's the one on the left. I do have a little bit of room. On the right, however, because of the pressure tank, I don't have much room for that. There's only a couple inches I can cut. So I will get these uh, fastened up here and show you exactly what's going on with the water lines, and then we'll be back and do the gas line together. So next time you see this, these water lines will be done. I'll be back with you here in just a minute. All right. Well, after much ado, I finally got the water lines connected. You can see those 24 inch shark bites. I had to make quite a loop there uh, on each of the lines, but it did work. There's no kinks. Um, I tried a 12 inch and an 18 both, and they actually both made kinks with the adapters. I had brass adapters to go on top. And so just a little bit of learning from the DIY side, but uh, those are now both connected. I'll start working on the gas and exhaust systems here in just a moment, but I wanted to show you that. If you're a plumber and you know why that can't happen or a reason this shouldn't work or there's a problem, please let me know because I've Googled, I've searched, I've asked. Nobody seems to know a reason why this shouldn't work. So those two 24 inch lines are on there and we've got the water supplies next. So I'm gonna make sure the water heater's positioned exactly where I want it, because obviously once it's filled, it's not moving. 
and then we'll get the gas going and everything else and get it filled up. So more to come. All right, we're down here at the gas input now, the gas line for the water heater. Obviously the water heater's control is off. So we've got our copper gas line with the gas valve off to our union fitting that we took off of the other water heater and we just need to get it matched back up. So we've got our T, uh, this is all black pipe to connect into here. You do have the option of going with a flexible gas. Some people have that flex line, but I'm trying not to spend a whole lot more money on fittings than I already have. So. We'll take this T and just like when we did with the uh, other pipe, we're gonna wrap it with our tape. Now this yellow tape you'll notice is uh, a different color. It actually is sold differently. It's made for gas line. So make sure you buy the stuff that is specifically for gas line. You don't wanna use uh, plumber's tape for it. And then it's a little bit tougher to cut. So I just grab a pair of scissors and cut it off. And there we go, we're ready to put that in. So we're gonna put this in making sure not to get any residue or anything inside there. We don't want anything obstructing the gas line at all. And we're gonna put this into our gas valve, get it threaded, there it goes. And it's gonna start to get tight pretty quick because this tape is a bit thicker. So again, we're gonna grab our pipe wrench here, tighten it down. And just like before, we're gonna go until, it's basically snug. We're not going super tight here, but it is a gas line. We wanna make sure it's tight and it's not gonna leak. And we'll test that in just a minute as well. You can use a plumber's dope. Uh, it's kind of like a putty you put on the gas line. I just don't have any, I have the tape. So that's kind of what I prefer to use is what I have as opposed to buying something else, but that is an option for you. And there we go. We're gonna be roughly straight up and down. We may have to adjust that in just a second. So next piece I'm gonna put on, we have the catch for the sediment, just a sediment trap, another, another nipple with a, a catch on the bottom of cap. And then we have the union piece for the top. I'm gonna do the union first. That way if I drop anything down in there, it clears and cleans out through there. I do have a little bit of stuff inside here, it looks like. Not sure why, but when I took this off, the uh, previous install, had put pipe dope inside the union fitting, like on the flared uh, fittings of the union, which I thought was kind of weird. But anyway, I got all that scraped off and did that on the wire wheel. So now that union's nice and clean on both sides. So again, we're just gonna take our tape. We're gonna lay it on the threads. You don't have to go six times around on this because it is a thicker tape. I did on the last one, it got kind of tight. So I think this time I may just go like three or four. So there's one two, three, four times around. Cut it off, mash it on there real nicely. And then this one's gonna go in the top fitting here. being real careful not to pull on the gas valve of the water heater. So there's that. Expose the union cap and we can see we're not quite lined up straight. I went a little too far on my fitting down here. So I'm just gonna go back a little bit just to make it nice and straight into that union fitting. And there we go. So this gets screwed down in here. Open up my pipe wrench all the way so it fits on that union fitting. And this is just a compression fitting. So this, we're just going down until it's snug. It's iron on iron. Don't have to worry about that. Now, we've got one more piece to do. That's our sediment trap on the bottom. And again, it's just the same thing. Lots of repetition, as you can see. So we're gonna put this on here. Now it's very important you don't turn on the gas valve on the water heater and light it until the water heater is full. We will get into testing for water leaks and everything here in just a moment, but I'm gonna show you one thing we need to do first on this gas line. So I've got that nice and snug. And now what I've got here is a little blue bottle. This is just a little squirt bottle I picked up for 99 cents at the, the store. And it's got about a 50-50 solution of soap and water in it. So 
what this is going to do is this is going to be my leak inspector. So obviously natural gas has a nice smell to it. If you're not familiar with it, it's got that uh, rotten egg smell, but this is going to help us detect leaks even better. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn this on and I'm going to get real quiet because I want to hear if there's anything hissing. And then I'm going to soak all of these joints down in here and all of these that I taped up and watch for bubbles of any kind to make sure it's not leaking. So let's take a look. So we'll turn the gas line on. I don't hear anything, so now we're going to soak it down. So the, the union fitting looks good, top and bottom. Don't see anything there. And you want to make sure this is nice and open. You're not trying to mist it or anything, but you just want a good soapy solution in there. I don't see any bubbles all the way around, so I think we are okay. Uh, can't decide if those bubbles are from the gas line or from the sprayer. So let's wipe it and test them one more time just to see, because I think I pulled the trigger a little too hard and made some bubbles on the sprayer. Yeah, nothing new coming out of there. So our tape worked. There's no leaks. I didn't do that fitting, but we'll just double check it while we're here. No leaks. And I don't smell any gas either, so I'm fairly certain everything's good. You always get cautious when you're messing with uh, natural gas. So I'm going to go ahead and leave the gas line on. Remember, we're not turning the water heater on until it's full of water. So I'm going to uh, pick the camera up here, and we'll turn the water line on and inspect for leaks together. Okay, so there you can see our gas line is connected. We work our way up the gas line. It's nice and straight. We'll get this bungee cord out of the way. It's not needed anymore now that the unions are attached. So we'll get that up and out of the way. And this one is to helping to hold the, the sidearm. So we're going to leave it there. But there's our cold water return line, or excuse me, feed line, I guess it is. And our exhaust manifold. I know I need to do exhaust. We'll do that in a second. But I've got to make another run to the hardware store. That's just me being a DIY novice. I didn't bother to check and that's a four inch exhaust. So I need to do that because my old one was a three. I've learned a lot of things about this nice big commercial water heater. So there's our cold water line and the water in the house is still on on hot. So we turn this, we should hear it start flowing not only into the tank, but the uh, sink over there is gonna start flowing as well. So we'll turn the water line on. There we go. The water heater is filling. I can hear it pretty straightforward. So as it fills, we're gonna watch for leaks on this fitting that we put in. This fitting that we put in, both the gate valves are fully closed. We've obviously got the drain that we redid. We'll watch for leaks there. And with it filling and running, let's check the top here for leaks. I don't see anything. I'll go around the water line so you can see, but looks like no leaks here at the top. Everything is nice and clean as well. So. Everything seems to be flowing. The water heater is filling up. I'm not gonna turn the gas on because I don't have the proper ventilation for it yet. I'll get that stuff and uh, we'll be back to finish up this project. As you can see, we are in the minutes. final stages of putting in our new water heater. So we've gone larger, we've gone to a commercial unit and it's been a whole lot of learning experience, but so we'll do the exhaust and I'll be back with you here in just a few minutes. Remember what I told you about the hot water system being a sealed system? This is why you leave one of your faucets open. You can hear that hissing. That is bringing all the water out of the tank and the hot water lines around the house to get back to this faucet. So once it's full and flowing, then I can turn that hot water spigot back off. But as you can see, we got a lot of air in that system and I don't want to have any chance of pressurizing the system without all water right, in it. Well, the water heater is done. We'll talk about the boiler here in a second, what's going on that. But uh, we hit some hiccups along this, so my apologies. I just had to get the project done. I didn't get any recording. So last time I think you saw the editing, I had uh, the gas line hooked up. Everything was ready to go there. Well, I filled the water heater with water to give you some background. And those two gate valves I had, you remember on the hot and cold? Both of them leaked. I adjusted the nuts and tried to see if maybe just the gate was loose. It wasn't that. It was a bad gate valve. Uh, had to unfortunately drain the whole system again, take those off, return them back to the hardware store, 
And this time I spent the extra couple bucks and I got two ball valves. So they're not leaking. The water heater is now on and functioning right now. Uh, I don't think in the last portion of video I had the exhaust hooked up. I've just got that. I've got a four inch uh, exhaust on the top of this water heater, narrowed down to a three and it goes out. If you haven't read online or in your instructions, a quarter inch per foot of travel is what they require as a minimum for the proper exhaust on your water heater. You can actually very easily test a water heater. We just did that with the exhaust. Just light a match. Once the uh, initial sulfur burn, put the match down here right near the exhaust and that flame should be drawn into the exhaust manifold. You can also blow the match out and watch where the smoke goes and it'll do the same thing. We tested that, it is working. So the water heater is lit. It is now heating up our water. We've turned off the hot water pipes in the bathroom that we're on. No more air is coming out there. And the hot water heater portion is done. Unfortunately, it's gotten late. This project took a lot more time than I anticipated, a lot more trips to the hardware store than I anticipated. So um, the boiler portion, this is not hooked up. You can see none of this is here. It's all free. That's going to be another day and it's going to be another video. So I hope this was helpful to everybody watching. I hope uh, I answered some questions. If you have comments, leave them down below. And uh, that's the water heater portion. Keep an eye for the next video, which will be how we're going to hook up this boiler system. And we're going to use some unions and valves and things so that it can be replaced as necessary as well. All right. Thanks for tuning in, guys. And uh, as always, don't, for don't forget, as I tell you in all my videos, it is scriptural. We never stop learning. God bless.